The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Doug Bell. I'm with CR Tech, and we're going to talk about what we've added in version 6.1 for thermal desktop and RADCAD. Uh, if I could get some people to raise their hands uh, to let me know that you can see my screen and you can hear me. Excellent. Thank you. So as if most of you will probably know this, uh, we have everybody muted uh, since it's a um, quite a few people. Uh, when we get to questions, uh, you can either raise your hand and I will attempt to unmute you, or what would probably be better is if you typed your questions into the question uh, panel. Uh, I have added the slides uh, for this to the uh, handouts panel of your uh, interface, uh, but we will, uh, I will send that out along with the video, a link to the video uh, when we're done. Uh, it might be tomorrow that you should see that. Uh, but with with all that done, I will proceed. So jumping right into it, uh, we've got a few improvements to network objects uh, for nodes. Uh, clone nodes can now reference a specific parent node. Uh, this avoids the issue of resequencing IDs, uh, things like that, that uh, was a problem. So now you pick a specific graphical node and that will be the parent for that clone. Uh, if you're not familiar with clones, they simply provide another connection to that same node without adding any mass or changing the definition um, of the original node. Uh, network element logic, we've expanded to include the volume and density for all nodes. Uh, I think in the last version, it was just for user-defined nodes, but now all nodes can access that information. Uh, with finite differences with thickness gradient, uh, most of you will know these as double-sided surfaces. Uh, we now have an option to include the lateral conductance uh, in the separation material. Uh, so you can see the checkbox here. Uh, so if you don't check that box, that's gonna be the default is off, uh, then it'll work like it used to. Uh, but then if you want to include that material in a lateral conduction, uh, all you have to do is check that box. Uh, object lists that you find in conductors, heat loads, and other objects uh, have a select all option in the shortcut menu. Simply right click uh, in that list and you'll see the, the select all option. Uh, more network objects that have had some improvements. Uh, conductors now have an advection option. Uh, contactors can now uh, connect to solid finite elements and to nodes in the to list. Uh, so that kind of help, especially the nodes, you can now connect a contactor to say a boundary condition. Uh, but the from objects, sorry, with the contactors will always be just uh, actual objects, so surfaces, solids, pipes, uh, things along those lines. Uh, heat loads will now display the surface area in the dialog, so you know how much area you're connecting to. Uh, for heaters, there's been a few changes. Uh, there are some new registers that tell you what the current sense temperature is and the heater capacity, regardless of what power level you're at. Um, the registers for the heaters are now displayed in the model browser when you're post-processing. So if you list by heaters, select a heater, you'll see the current value uh, of all those registers. Uh, in addition, I mentioned this uh, the other day with the user interface, but the registers uh, for heaters are now available in the model browser symbol list when you're post-processing. So you'll see registers found in the save file you can select one and create XY plots directly from the model browser. Uh, with the boundary condition mapper, uh, we've now added the option to set initial temperatures uh, by mapping onto a model. Uh, 
advanced mapping uh, has been added to uh, to search for the closest mapping point. Uh, this eliminates the need to set progressive tolerance levels and will improve the mapping accuracy. We've had some great success with people who are having troubles uh, with the boundary condition mapper. Uh, and then when we put this in, they were able to get very good results. Uh, with the time XYZ mapper, which is also our closest point mapper, uh, we've made a couple of changes. We've added a maximum tolerance limit uh, that you can set. Uh, so this limits how far out it can reach uh, to map data. And you can now also do stack symbol mapping uh, with that mapper option. For thermal electrics, uh, quite a few changes here. We've, uh, we now have multi-stage coolers that we'll support, uh, which also has a new inherited control option. So if you do a control side and you have a multi-stage, you would point to the other um, cooler uh, to drive the temperature. And so then now they have an inherited control. Uh, so things that are now supported, find a different thin shells, find a different solids, or find element surface meshes, uh, meshes can be used. Um, the uh, curved substrates can be modeled. So we see here a curved uh, tech. And then we've made some minor form changes to add clarity uh, to those. Uh, in the model checks, uh, there was a color by property name option that's been there for a long time, but basically you would have to go through and set the colors for all of the different uh, optical properties. If all of your properties are in the default color, we now randomize the colors. Uh, we have added in a legend that'll be displayed so you know what material is associated with which color. And something else we've added in is when you are doing some of these checks, if you double click on any of the graphics uh, that are visible, it'll reset your graphics. Uh, you can still use the reset graphics option, uh, but this is a little more convenient. Uh, in RADCAD with the display active sides, and of course this also applies to say, uh, what would it be uh, like, also display top side, display domain, tag set activity, uh, displaying insulation, uh, all of those options. We now display a legend uh, just like we did before, but this, or not before, in the uh, color by properties. Uh, but this now shows you, if you're looking at green, you see active, uh, you're seeing the active side, but the opposite side is inactive. Uh, so we give you all of those keys in there. Uh, any surfaces and solid faces that are not in the analysis group are now drawn in a red wireframe as opposed to solid red. So you can actually get a feel for what's happening. Uh, when something's not in the analysis group, it does not exist as far as the radiation is concerned. So I would see that there's a big hole in my system right here. Uh, and again, double click any of the text to reset the graphics. Uh, that's really kind of a short list. We're trying to keep these things short and sweet. Um, those are the primary changes. If you do want to see um, all of the changes, you can download our um, our manual and take a look at the uh, uh, the release notes. And we will give you a full list of what's there with links to the section of the manual that discusses that, uh, that change. Uh, in case you missed it on Tuesday, uh, we had a what's new in the user interface. Uh, some of the things we covered was a simplified user interface option, uh, improved solutions with cyclical convergence solutions, uh, updated solution defaults. Uh, we've got additional user logic options. We have model browser enhancements. I mentioned a few of those today. Um, we've also added in the ability, an easier way to do recovery files 
and improved the model initialization and restarts. Um, and then we've done some post-processing changes. Now, if you did miss it, you can find the video in our new video catalog. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this, if you go to our website and go to training, tips and samples, and then check the what's new under the category, it'll list any of the videos. So these ones, as we put them up here, uh, will be available throughout the year for that. Uh, but if you haven't used our new video catalog, it's a great way to um, find recorded videos. You can use these filters. These are, as soon as I check this box, this filter list shrunk to just the options that were available under what's new. So it's a great way to find how-to videos. I've uh, got a few questions that came in. Um, what do I mean by reset graphics? So if you are in a, um, a view such as post-processing or uh, displaying colored surfaces and you want to go back to colored by layers and turn off all of the uh, what's displayed, uh, there's a reset graphics command uh, that will turn all of that off. Uh, same thing goes with uh, orbit displays and things like that. But then if you double click any of the graphics in those views, it will reset the graphics so that you're back to the just the model view uh, with coloring by layers and, and things like that. Um, so updating the colors. Uh, so this goes back to the color by property name. Uh, the question is, uh, does it update the colors? So if I change the optical property name, uh, we don't actually change the colors in the property definition. Uh, it's, it just um, randomizes for the display. Uh, and then if you were to display again with new properties, you might have a different set of colors uh, that come up. Uh, so really, it's just for that instant of, of the display. It doesn't affect what's stored in the uh, in the property data. In fact, I found that if you do have some properties that are set to a specific color, if you reload your optical property database, it will reset everything back to um, the color because I think those colors are stored uh, with the model, not necessarily with the database. So once you bring in a new database, it thinks that everything's starting over again. So you're back to the default colors. Uh, are there any other questions uh, that are coming up? OK, I have one here. Uh, somebody asked if. Um, yeah, they had, they're looking at the manual of 6.1, uh, and they noticed that the tutorials are not in the manual anymore. Uh, we've changed that, so now manuals will be found in our forum. Uh, but there's there's actually two ways to show this. So let me jump over to my browser here. Uh, one way to find tutorials is to go under training and tips and samples. And we have quite a few um, samples. Uh, and you'll notice here, you got sample models, you have tips and tricks, uh, getting started, tutorials, and verification and validation. Um, if you want to find tutorials that are more step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something, uh, you can simply check that box, uh, it'll filter down uh, so that you see what's available here. And if you wanted to look at just radiation tutorials, uh, you could go there and you'll find all of our tutorials here. Uh, we're planning on doing this uh, going forward. Uh, all of those, if you expand one of these, you'll see that it takes you to the forum. So if you wanted to, you could go straight to our forum, go to tutorials, 
and then you'll find Thermal Desktop tutorials, RadCAD tutorials, FlowCAD tutorials, TD Direct tutorials, and OpenTD tutorials. Uh, currently, all of these tutorials are set up for version 6.1. Um, if, you, uh, if you're using an older version, they're still in your uh, user's manual. They're still in the uh, install directory. Um, so, but once you go to 6.1, we're not installing the files directly on your computer, and we're not including those in the in the manual. So you can come here and find those. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? All right, well, I thank you all for your attendance. Uh, I will be sending out an email to everybody with uh, the link to the video uh, that goes directly to that video page. Uh, we'll also have it on YouTube uh, under our uh, public channel so that anybody can get to it even if you're not registered for our website. Uh, and then I'll also include the, uh, the slides for that. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, I hope this was informative for you, and we look forward to hearing you, hearing from you. <laughs> thank you very much.